A couple of months back, Tim Osman did some excellent observations of Salt Lake City, positioned at the Antelope Island Causeway. Looking in Google Earth, you can get a rough distance of 20 odd miles. And with any shots over the, the Great Salt Lake, you could see some mountains and those mountains were reflected in the water. And when he went on to Hoxley and Lyle's Circle Jerk show, one of the, the silly comments that got made, one of the kind of typical flat earth catchphrases was by Nathan, and then of course the rest chimed in, about how you could only get that kind of reflection on a perfectly flat surface or some, you know, Nonsense like that. So, so obviously this uh, all comes back down to scale again. When a circle or a sphere is large enough, the you know, when you're looking at it from a very small scale yourself, then the surface is going to be effectively flat. You're looking at a very, very tiny portion of it. So Tim's observation was just over twenty miles, and. What that means is that in, with regard to the circumference of the Earth, it's only going to be a part of a degree because there's 69 miles in a single degree. But as far as the mountains go, you can see that there's mountains running up to the east. And then the only other peaks, like really sort of big peaks that appear to be in the area are much further away and over Antelope Island from Tim's viewpoint and stuff like that. So. I think we've got images of Antelope Island and these are the, the most obvious peaks that could be in the shot when looking towards Salt Lake City and if you look at the, the general sort of distance in Google Earth you can see it's somewhere in the region of say 20 odd to 30 odd miles roughly. So. No part of Tim's observation is ever is going to reach anywhere near a full degree of curve on the Earth. It's going to be well within it, round about half a degree or slightly less than that. So what I want to do is look at a scaled reflection on a curved surface. So this is a convex mirror. And I've marked off an area on it between these two notches so that I've got an, an arc that I can measure. And when I measure that up against a protractor, I'm getting approximately 19 degrees across this span. So Tim's observation was in a single degree. So we're only looking to occupy a very small space there. So this ruler is just to confirm that it's obviously a convex surface. So then we can look at the photographs from the P900. I could only get so close with the P900. So I shifted angle and moved in close with my phone. Now obviously this still isn't fully to scale. I can't get down low enough, I can't get in close enough. All this is happening within a single degree, whereas this is the equivalent of looking from hundreds of miles away at a mountain range, several hundred thousand feet in height, rather than 10,000 feet, which it is in real life. So, as you can imagine, if you can get that kind of scale, if you can get in low and much, much closer to that target, there is no possible way you couldn't get that type of reflection in such a small surface area, relatively small surface area of a sphere. It's a very, very tiny, shallow angle overall, less than a half of a degree. You would absolutely get a perfect reflection. It would be as good as flat. Cheers.